uh, I guess first things first, what are you going to do tomorrow, Sean? Well, actually, it's a pretty good problem to have considering signing free agents this year uh, relative to in years past because the minute that draft ends, you know, there's an hour and a half of really a lot of phone calls being made. And so this, this will, and look, this is by no means the reason uh, to do this, but we'll be in a position to clearly identify a ranking order of players that we want to sign and commit money to as free agents, and then have the correct vision as to how they're going to make this roster. You know, I just think it'll bring a, a little bit more order on the third day um, with everyone in their own houses. Sean, can you just address the, the thought process for both players and, and the aggressive moves to, to get to both of them? Yeah, look, here's the one thing I would say is um, we were able to identify and fill some needs um, without reaching, you know, and so with, obviously with, uh, with Cesar, you know, we felt like an interior lineman would be someone uh, that could help us, uh, and, and that was early in the draft yesterday. Linebacker certainly was an area um, that that we knew uh, coming into today we wanted to hopefully address and yet um, you know without having that that second round pick you know there's uncertainty as to whether one of those guys is going to be there or be available and and so we we're able to move back up when when we saw uh, our guy fall some and then. Look, later in the third round, when you really start looking at the value of our fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, and you do the point totals, um, it can appear like a lot, but, you know, it, it really was light getting into the third round. We needed to find a trade partner. Minnesota, fortunately, was one that, that uh, you know, at the last minute they were in, and, and you know, we have a clear vision for the, the two players we selected today. Um, I, 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 so two things happened, you know, we hit, we hit on a couple need positions and, uh, we felt like where we had these guys graded, it, it really matched. Sean, is the vision for Bond as a, as a linebacker or uh, up the edge? Linebacker, um, it's a great question. You know, we had a lot of production in college as, as a rush, uh, rush in, you know, he's a guy we think that can play. Uh, at the Mike position and also play at the Sam position. Uh, I do like his pressure traits, um, but we see him as, as someone that uh, that can play in a stack position if need be, uh, or certainly be a guy that, that can give us uh, some versatility as a rusher. Sean, had you guys been trying to trade up for a little while before you were able to get the deal done with Cleveland? How long would you say you were trying to, to get, and I assume it was yeah. with Vaughn in mind, right? It was, um, absolutely. Uh, and man, I'll bet it took, that probably took a good part of an hour. There were a lot of conversations with close with one team and then look, there's no certainty. Um, cause two things has to happen. You know, when, when you're doing that, you know, the team that that's willing to make a trade and come out generally means that a player they're looking for got selected either near their pick, um, so there are a few times we thought we were close to a deal and, and then it and it fell off and it ended up being a little bit of a blessing because, uh, you know, the compensation really was, was something we were very comfortable with um, relative to kind of getting up. The, the challenge in moving up sometimes when you're picking at 24 or the bottom, the bottom third of each round is it's, there's a tremendous amount of uh, point differential you know, to go from the bottom of the third into the second or the bottom of the third to the top of the third. And um, so we look, you sweated it. We sweated a few picks, you know, hoping that he was still there. Obviously, uh, we're not going to make a trade like that unless that player's on the board, you know. So in each case, th those trades come in while the team we're trading with is on the clock because, you know, you, you, your player's there. So, but we, we spent a lot of time on Vaughn and, and, and it seemed like quite a bit of time uh, on Troutman, but, uh, but it seemed like a lot more uh, with the first third round pick.
you like about Troutman and as far as how he fits into your offense? Well, we see him as a true why. I, I, I do think for a small college player, we feel like he's got real good inline strength. Um, he's also someone that, that I think has got very good hips. So his change of direction, um, you know, you can see that in, in how he sets up his routes. Uh, so for someone who played at a smaller level, you see a dominant player. Um, and, and we see him as someone that, that can help us uh, as an inline tight end. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, build on his first year, build on some of the things that, that we feel like uh, he can do outside. Um, one, of the, one of the challenges, we, we talked about this yesterday with the, maybe the lack of off-season program the teams are going to have. Um, you know, all of these players are, are off the chart, uh, smart and tough guys that they have great, great scores in a lot of different areas relative to the, uh, the mental side of the game. Um, part of that is just our identification when we're finding, you know, what we call a saint player. Uh, but I think both of both of today's picks as well as yesterday's are guys that are going to be able to uh, to learn fairly quickly. Seeing that this is a small draft class, when you go into drafts, do you look at your roster and try to realistically say how many of these players can actually make the roster based on what we have now? And based yeah. on that, we're going to be more aggressive or try to pick up more picks? We do. I mean, look, before this, we have this, this meeting before every draft and, and it's, you know, here are those positions that, that we feel like can come in and, and contribute, uh, you know, and we felt coming in, obviously linebacker was a position we felt like would have a great chance to compete and, and, and make a team and have a clean vision for you know, how do they play in the kicking game? How many snaps do we think we'll get in special teams? Um, we felt that way about an ex, you know, an offensive lineman and we felt that way at the tight end position. So, um, you know, we'll have a great opportunity here tomorrow to pay close attention to what happens in, in, in front of us, but to identify uh, some additional players that we think can come in and, and hopefully uh, find a spot on our roster. Every year we've seemed to have, have gotten a few, a few players that, uh, that have done well after the draft. So, but to answer your question, yes. Uh, each year we have that meeting with, with all the scouts, with all the coaches. And I just kind of approach the question, you know, here are the positions that I think I would like to play if I was drafted by the Saints. I'd like to be an interior offensive lineman, a linebacker. I'd like to be uh, the tight end, I'd like to be maybe an extra corner, you, you know, and I think those are important discussions relative to um, the clean vision with the player. Sean, you said you weren't surprised by too many things that happened in round one. Were you guys really surprised that Vaughn fell that far? Uh, all the sort of media analysts that do this seem to have him as, as a first rounder, early second rounder. I, I, we 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 saw him as someone that that we felt like was going to be drafted in in probably the first twenty picks of the second round. We we felt like this was a player that was going to be hard for us to get because we didn't have a second round pick. Um, and so uh, yeah, I, look, each team looks at things differently, um, but but our vision for the player was was really clear. And uh, I don't know that this morning coming into this process. Look, the morning started when we first got on our first conference call of our, how, how can we make this happen? And that discussion begins with a second round pick. And it was obviously way too rich to go from the bottom of the third into the front of the second round. I mean, uh, you know, we were unable to do that. Um, but fortunately, you know, he, he, he came in, in, in range and, and we were able to make a trade. And sorry if you said this in your other answer on Troutman. Um, where is he as a as a blocker versus receiver? Is it? Is I, I think he was one of the better blocking tight ends we felt in this draft. Uh, you know, I, I'd say especially for a player that, that played at a small school, uh, we had a clear vision 
of an inline Y. I think he'll be able to carry the weight. I think he'll be able to gain some weight. But we also felt this player was loose in the hips, and he was someone that was pretty good with his change of direction. I think after the season ended, he had a good spring. In other words, the impressions we saw, you know, after uh, after the season were, were very good with him. And, uh, man, we're, he was another one that I, I – I, I clearly wouldn't have seen him uh, available at the end of the third round. But uh, again, that's how it works. John, you guys' approach to the draft is probably different than, than a lot of teams with you guys targeting the guys and going after them. Is that just supreme belief in, in your scouting? I mean, it seems to work out every time you do it. But like, where, where does that confidence come from to, to just really have your guys and go and get them? Well, look, there's there's a couple different things in place. You know, we feel like I don't want to say we have a veteran team, but certainly we have a, a, a playoff experience team. Um, if you went back to 2006, you know, we took all of those picks. We had two sevens. We also acquired players in the second round. We backed down, took Roman Harper, acquired Jeff Fain in the fourth round. We backed down. We drafted Jari Evans and we also traded for Hollis Thomas. And so um there were a lot more positions available to make our team. And I use that example in 2006 than realistically in 2020. So part of it is the current roster. Uh, but, but I would say it, to some degree, I, I, Mickey and I both share that belief that there's a, a clear vision for someone. Um, we're not afraid to, to, to target that player and within reason, go get them. Does anybody have anything else for Coach Payton? John, last thing, uh, just reading your uh, body language, you seem pretty happy with what you were able to accomplish. Is that safe to say? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I thought the process went smooth. Our, our, our staff, everyone did a great job. Our communication, there, there, was, there was quite a bit of time spent on the telephone with different teams and uh, – you know, that can, that can be somewhat, I mean, you, you've got to be patient. And I can't think of how many calls were, were made that were made relative to moving forward to, to get a player. You have a, you think you have a deal with the team, and then at the last minute, they got a better deal. And, and so there's nothing really for sure until until you hear them agree to it. And, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think we, we helped ourselves in, in, I know our scouting staff and coaching staff, all of us are excited, Mickey and Jeff. And, um, you know, these were players that were, were definite Saints prototype target players. All of them, uh, you know, fit what we're about. Thank you very much, Coach. Thanks, right. Sean. Hey, we'll see you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sean. Getting ready to wind down and then you uh pull a buzzer beater out on us well yeah. listen <laughs> um the worst thing is my daughter's gonna be pissed because <laughs> we made that trade and sam was still in here but she is on the bed so she's not on the board <laughs> she wanted more tv time oh absolutely yeah she didn't care who we were picking now sam did but uh she didn't care who we were picking. She just wanted a chance to get on TV. We were joking. It's like the, the Bum Phillips trade when he traded the rest of his picks so he could yeah. go to racetrack. <laughs> right. No, that wasn't the case. But uh, listen, uh, I think we're pretty excited. We, I, I don't think we are excited, really excited. You know, that's, that's three players that we had in our top 40. And, uh, um, man, I, I think in a lot of ways it couldn't have worked out any better. 
Hey, how are you that the process that went into the two trades today? Did you just feel like you got such great value for those guys that you had to had to go get them? Well, I look. I think it was fair value. Yes. Um, man, we 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 spent. I feel like we spent uh, our group spent all day on the phone. I mean, we we tried. We were trying forever to uh, um, you know make the deal. To, uh, uh, that eventually got a Zach Bond. I mean, we, we, we tried every team between where we are, we were at uh, pick 88 and, and, and pick 33. I mean, every team we, we talked to, talked to a bunch of them. Um, um, there was a few times we felt like, hey, we were close to making a deal. And then, and then, uh, uh, you know, that fell through. And so eventually, you know, we get to uh, uh, the pick where we got Zach, and then as we're sitting there and we're just seeing this player that's kind of out there by himself uh, on our board, and and um, so we started calling him, and and man, we had uh, probably ten or twelve teams that we had called, and and uh, had a couple uh, that were close, but uh, ultimately it was Minnesota, and, and uh, able to get that done. So pretty excited about it. Did Did you say you tried to go up as high as uh, thirty three for Bond? Well, we called. We, we listen. Honestly, we didn't have enough resources to get to the top of the second round. But you always call and ask, right? <laughs> um, so we, you know, we t- we spoke to every team, and there was a, a number of teams that had multiple picks uh, in the second round. So you talk to those two. Those are kind of the first ones on on your list, because um, oftentimes if you have two picks in a round, you know, you're a little more willing to um, back out on their on your second choice, pick up more picks. Um, so those were our first targets, um, and a couple of those teams had had higher picks as well as a, a pick later in the round. So, so would it be fair to, to say, did, did you guys have a, have a first round grade on him then, if you were trying at least exploring to get up that high? Uh, he froze up on me here. Did Did you guys have a have a first round grade on him if you were exploring to go up that high to get him? I missed the first part of that question. We had a little technical difficulty here. I want to try it again. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you guys have a first round grade on him? It's, you know, assuming you're trying to go to 33. But yeah, it, I, look, I don't, I don't want to talk about the actual grade, but, I, you know, it's suffice to say that it, he, he was in our top 40. Um, actually, both these, these uh, guys that we got in third round were. Hey, Mickey, this could just be perception, but I feel like this is the first time you all have said you all tried that hard to make a trade and you couldn't get it done for a while. Was there some more reluctance this year for teams to make deals? No, I, it wasn't that. It was just we were so far back. I mean, we were we were uh, pick eighty eight to you know pick in the a pick in the thirties and forties. That that's a long ways to go, and it doesn't happen very often. You can you can probably count on one hand the number of times that someone's gone, um, you know, that far back and, and traded up. And so there's not a lot of history there, and and teams don't want to go back that far. It's too much unknown in terms of what players will be available. So you understand the reluctance. Um, you know, they're, they're looking to get knocked over with, with the offer that you made. And, and, you know, we had our limits as to what we would do. Um, but listen, it, it worked out great for us because um, he was still available later and it didn't cost us as much as we were willing to go. Yeah, that was the, my next question, Mickey. I would assume that the compensation went down. You were probably willing to spend a lot more draft capital to get him. Would that be correct to assume? Yeah, we were willing to spend more, definitely. How long did it take for the Troutman uh, trade to materialize? Uh, well, that took less time because we, we, you know, we really didn't make that decision until um, – you know, till late in the, in the third round, it's like, wow, this guy's still there. Um, here's what we have. And it got, it finally got to the point where what we had left was a uh, reasonable compensation for the picks in the, in the, uh, in the bottom of the third. So, um, uh, but it wasn't long. I mean, you know, those picks go off pretty quick when you're talking about five minutes a pick. And, and uh, so you have to act a little quicker than you did you know, earlier in the day. How valuable will it be tomorrow that, you know, pending y'all trading back in that you, your whole staff just has more time to go over the list for priority free agents? Yeah. Well, I'm interested to see that because listen, this is going to be different. You know, typically we're in all in a room together in the draft room, 
And it's like, uh, you know, it's like the floor of, of the stock exchange. There's a lot of talk, a lot of conversations going on. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of communication uh, in order to keep track of, of the guys we're going after, the offers that are being made, how much we have available uh, to spend. Um, this is going to be different because, because we're not in the same room. And so we'll have, you know, obviously we'll have all day to kind of plan for that and plan it. Um, and then and then be able to execute it but it's going to be different it's going to be different for us as well as every other team um you know we'll have our targets and and uh, you know as soon as that draft um that last pick is made we're going to hit the ground running mickey was the willingness to, to target a handful of guys and just specifically go after them is that related to the strength of your roster is that unique to just this year or is that kind of a philosophy? Yeah, well, I, look, I think our philosophy has always been to, uh, hey, if we have a vision um, and, and an affinity for someone, you know, we'll put a target on them and, and then we'll go get them. So th that fits in with the philosophy that we've had. But I do think that some of this is relative to how you view your roster. You know, it's, it's look, it's hard to make our team in a lot of areas. Um, and we've got, you know, we've got a lot of young young talented players on our team that have performed and we've got some guys that that uh um that are a little more unknown that we like a lot too that that uh, you know you really haven't seen yet and so it's 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 difficult to make our roster and, and uh so i think for us it's more about quality over quantity yeah, um so i think that's right mickey can you get it go into uh what you personally liked about Ruiz as a, as a player. I don't think we've asked your opinion of that yet. Yeah. Listen, the, the um, first of all, you know, you, you love the talent, you love the, the quality of the player, but man, he fits in perfectly with, with uh, um, the things that we've identified as a saints player. You know, he's intelligent, he's tough. He's uh, um, not just tough, but gritty in terms of, of how he's conducted himself. He's endearing to his teammates. And yet, has a lot of leadership qualities. So um, it's really, there's nothing that we don't like about the player. Um, so we're excited to have him. Does anybody else have anything for Mickey Loomis this evening? Mickey, yeah, I, I, Sean, Sean was on there long enough to answer all your questions. I like <laughs> yeah. yeah, last thing, Mickey. I, and I'm, I'm guessing you sort of already answered this, but you're happy with what you guys were able to do, right? If you don't jump back into the draft, Tomorrow, you will consider this to be a very successful draft. Yeah, look, I, I, I'm extremely excited about about, and, I, and sometimes there's a little bit of a, a downer when you only have three players. You know, you can look at it that way. I don't, I don't look at it that way. I, I feel like we've added three high quality players, high character, intelligent uh, guys that are going to fit with our roster perfectly, and uh, you know, we've had a lot of success in the in the undrafted free agent. Uh, uh, arena over the years and so I'm excited about what we might be able to find there and that's a credit to um, to our scouting department uh, um, and and the guys Terry Fontenot and Kai and Jeff that that um, once once we get these guys targeted go recruit and 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 our coaches do a great job of recruiting and so um, I, I've got a lot of pride in what we've been able to do post draft over the years and and i'm hoping that uh, uh and i expect that to continue tomorrow hey, can i sneak one more in uh yeah you bet does the approach have anything to do with maybe limited information at all on on guys and you felt stronger about the guys you knew a lot about um well no on the surf on the surface that would make some sense and yet i i felt pretty good about you know we pair our board down so, so much. Jeff does a great job of this, of, of really honing in on the guys that we um, have a strong affinity for. And I felt really good about the information that we had on that group of players. I didn't feel like we, there was a lot of gaps. There were some gaps definitely because we didn't have, you know, the pro day information. And there was a, there was probably a few guys that we would like to have been able to visit a little longer with. Um, a few medicals that we would like to have rechecks on. And yet, and I didn't feel like that hampered us uh, in any way, uh, shape or form uh, for this draft. So um, look, I, li I like it better when we have more information, certainly, but given the uh, hand we were dealt here, 
um, I felt good about about uh, the way we organized that. Did you get asked about receiver position before I got on the call? I did not. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious if you could kind of give us your perspective on that, with it being supposedly a deep draft and receiver and the production that the team had um, outside of Michael Thomas last year. Yeah. Well, look, you know. Uh, um, Two things. One, this was a deep draft and is a deep draft relative to the receiver position. There's a lot of guys there that we liked and 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 were in that top 40 that uh, I talked about. Um, it didn't come to pass that that one of those guys was available when we were picking, uh, um, or there were other guys that we had you know liked a little better. So this isn't a reflection on them. This is just the way the draft fell to us. Um, I, but the other part of that is that, listen, we feel good about our group. You know, we added Emmanuel Sanders. Uh, I love the uh, prospects that we have with uh, uh, Traquan Smith. He's done some really good things to date. Uh, we've got some young guys that, that, uh, that we like a lot. And, and um, so I, I, I probably didn't have the same view of the position that maybe some, some people outside the building have. And Mickey, can I ask that same question sort of about the um, the quarterback position? Is that the position that you considered uh, addressing in the draft or you just felt like you could find it somewhere else? Yeah, I, look, I think the same sort of thing there is is that uh, um, obviously there's some really good quarterbacks in this draft, but, you know, I, Sean's been really clear and I think we've all been really clear that, that you know, we love uh, the prospect of Taysom Hill and, and what he might be able to do for us in the future. Obviously, uh, Drew's back, so we, you know, that's it's a strong room. It's a strong room again um, uh, for us. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't feel like this was a must position in this draft, and yet, you know, if 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 someone would have fell to us in in the right spot, we could have easily taken them. All right. All right. Thank you Thanks. very much, Mickey. Mickey. Good Thanks. fellas. Thank you, you much. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. Take care. And Thanks. Ladies, Thanks. Nice Thanks. to see all of you. All right. Take care, guys. Go, well, Lucy, Thanks to hang back. in there. Uh, I'll now uh, turn it over to Adam, who's joined us. Uh, Adam, if you can hit your demute button, if that's such a word, and then I'll, I'll <laughs> uh, the, the little red thingy over there and, and join the New Orleans media. There you go. Welcome to New Orleans. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm excited. Uh, just we'll begin by where are you right now and uh, your thoughts on being drafted by the Saints? Yeah, I'm actually in Dayton, Ohio right now, um, just like I would planned to be throughout this process, obviously, obviously even before the coronavirus hit. Um, but I'm super excited to be a part of the New Orleans Saints uh, organization and super excited to, you know, get my foot in the building eventually and, and get to work. Hey, Adam, how much contact did you have with the Saints kind of leading up to tonight's selection? Um, honestly, not as much. Um, I, I didn't have too much. Uh, I knew they were interested in me and, and liked me as a player and person and everything like that, but I didn't have too much coming into it. Adam, Adam, you, I imagine it's got to be. Do you have any that. idea how high that interest was, Adam? You said you knew they were interested in you, but did you have any idea how intense that interest was? Um, no, not really, honestly. Um, I mean, I talked to my agent about it, obviously going through every single team in the, in the league. And yeah, he did mention that the interest from the Saints was, was high, but uh, nothing like super, super high or out of this world or anything like that, that I knew of. What Adam, I, you I, I, I imagine it's got to be a little flattering to know that a team gave up four draft picks to move up to get you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I actually didn't even know that until now. So, um, I mean, I just got the call. I didn't see the trade information or anything like that. But, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely a good thing. Now, am I right in saying that you didn't ever catch a pass until getting to college? Yes, 100% correct. Never played another position either other than quarterback until about 10 days into my freshman year at Dayton. So do you feel like you're, you're kind of just scratching the surface on, on your potential and that, you know, the sky's the limit kind of from where you are right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm polished in, in several areas as it is, but I definitely have a very, very high ceiling and have a lot of room to grow and a lot of potential. And did you play basketball in high school? I did, yes, all four years. 
And, and how has that translated to football and, and helped you, you know, as a, as a pass catcher? Yeah, no, I mean, obviously rebounding. I was one of the bigger kids on my team, especially being from a smaller high school and just learning how to use your body and, and high point the ball. And then um, couple that with the, you know, short area agility and everything, which ties into your routes and getting separation at the top and all that. So it definitely helped out. Adam, what do you know about the guys that the Saints have playing tight end now and how they use the position in the offense? Yeah, um, just from what I know, Obviously, I've seen uh, they obviously use a move guy a lot, Jared Cook, and then um, they do have True Wise and all that on the roster. So um, they do. I mean, they do it all from what I've seen on on film. They they use tight ends in every single way you can imagine on the field. Who are some of the guys that you've modeled your game after, especially since you haven't played the position for you know a super long time? Yeah, um, definitely recently. Uh, over the past two years, George Kittle, just starting from how hard he plays. And, and I emulate that in my game, I believe. And um, just how hard he goes after people, it's it's amazing to watch. And I love it. And same with TJ Hawkinson. I mean, they're pretty much – I mean, they're obviously not the same level of player yet, but TJ Hawkinson has a lot in his game, and I just try to emulate uh, that style of play. So, so are you just, like, studying the Saints? It seems like you, you kind of know how they operate already. Yeah, I mean, I'm – to be honest, I'm a pretty big football junkie, so I watch a lot of film on a lot of teams' pre-draft process just to kind of, like, match it up with my college offense and see, you know, just read coverages and, co and count it out and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've probably watched, like, 25 of the teams, so the Saints was definitely one of them that I did watch. So, yes. And, and when you were watching them, like, how, how did you see yourself fitting them with, with what they already do? Yeah, I mean, I think I can do um, anything you ask of a – of a tight end, I do think I'm more of a traditional, you know, why put my hand in the dirt, but that's not for me to decide or anything like that, obviously. Um, but, I mean, I think I can do it all on, on the field as a tight end. It, you, brought up, uh, you brought up Kittle, uh, and I, I'm assuming that includes his blocking game. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, Sean said he liked uh, your ability to block. Is that something you had to put a lot of effort into, just considering what positions you played uh, coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Especially playing quarterback, you never really, you know, get physical or touch anyone. So um, it was kind of like a mindset switch I had to have when I switched the position my, my true freshman year. And I just continued to develop that and then couple of that mentality and that mindset with my uh, technique that I'm continuously learning. And I have a lot of room to grow in that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely pride myself on it. I took huge leaps and bounds over the last three years. Adam, what was the night sort of like for you? I mean, it's pretty late up there, and well, it's late here too, but, I mean, just sort of waiting until the very end of this round. What was that process like when you got the phone? Yeah. No, I mean, it was kind of stressful, obviously, going through it all. And, um, you know, obviously just with conversations with my agent, like maybe this team will take you, and then it's like, oh, no, they don't. And then it just keeps going on and on and on. Um, but I was super excited when I obviously saw a number pop up on my phone from – Louisiana and I was super excited and um, glad I got that call obviously from the Saints. The Saints have a history of you know either drafting or picking up small school guys FCS D2 D3 you name it mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. Are you familiar uh, with that or is that kind of news to you? That's actually news to me. No I didn't know the history of of the selections and free agency and all that. All right, cool. Who, who was the last player to come out of Dayton uh, to get drafted? Who, uh, 1977, um, in the 11th round, I know that. Uh, so you know some history, yeah, it's, this is good. I, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I forget the name because there's like two names that get jumbled because the one that like actually played in the game and then one that one that didn't. I think the last the guy's last name was West Westfeld, maybe something like that. So I do I do know. Yeah, yeah Bill, last time. Bill Westfeld. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's him. I I mean, how, how cool is that? Uh, just you know, you're talking about you know, more than 40 years here uh, mm -hmm. since your school's had a player drafted, and you're you're going in the third round to a uh, you know, pretty good football team. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it means the world to me, and um, I wouldn't change a thing about where I went to school. I tell people that all the time. You know, if they ask me why didn't I grand transfer or do this or or that. Um, I'm, I mean, I, I don't really care 
you know, I, I, I love where I went to school and um, I take a lot of pride in it. And um, it's awesome. You know, I get all the, you know, texts and my teammates and just the bond I built with them. It's, it's super special to me. Adam, where did your mother play college basketball? Uh, she played at Albion College in, in Michigan, a, a small D3 school. And who played who played basketball at Indiana or football? Do you have a, a yeah relative? yeah my my uncle actually so my mom's brother so on the same side of the family he played linebacker at Indiana, um, he was a preferred walk on. Does anybody else have anything for Adam this evening before we say good night? Yeah, uh, one one quick question on my end when when you were when you were uh, you know going into your senior year of high school even getting ready to go to Dayton, I, I mean, not a ton of offers on your end. And could you have imagined then at that point that you'd be talking about uh, you know, being a NFL draft pick at tight end of all places? No, no, i would be honest. Like, no, I didn't think, honestly, going to college, I didn't really think I would play another position. Um, and then once I switched positions, I didn't think that it could get to this point, you know, where you get drafted on day two and all that. Um, but I knew the work I put in, you know, made that, helped to make that a realistic, um, a realistic thing in my life. And, you know, uh, I couldn't imagine it at the beginning, but I'm glad it's here, obviously, now. You were – were you offered by Harvard coming out? Yeah, yeah, just uh, Cornell, Harvard, Dayton. So are you, like, a 4.0 GPA guy? <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm pretty – I, like – I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm pretty smart. Like, I did good in high school, and obviously I did very well here at Dayton. I graduated my electrical engineering degree from here as well. So I'm um, not a 4.0 student, but um, I take my academics very seriously. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. 4.0 in engineering of any type sounds really hard. So, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, engineering, engineering was definitely, definitely tough, but manageable for sure. Adam, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And we're going to be in touch with you tomorrow uh, for some other things, but uh, Again, last call for Adam here. Does anybody have anything? Oh, thanks, Adam. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Thanks, Adam. Thank awesome. You. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Good luck, man. Thank you.